Hello, everyone. Welcome to St. Teresa of Calcutta Parish as we celebrate Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord. Celebrating our Mass today is Father Brandt. Our Mass begins with a reading in the back by the palms, starting on page 86 of your Breaking Bread book. If you could please stand and face the back of the church. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. My brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to hurl the, with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal Mystery. That is to say, his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection in his life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, God, sanctify these branches with your, with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, reply, The Master has need of them then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, behold your king comes to you meek and riding on an ass and on a colt, the fowl of the beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and had their cloaks over them and he sat upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept crying out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, like the crowd who acclaimed Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. Our entrance hymn is in the other book, the Spirit and Psalm book, number 165, Hosanna to the Son of David, number 100. And sixty five. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Hosanna, Hosanna. The son of David, Hosanna, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Blessed is he 
who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up ancient doors, so the king may enter in the king of glory. This King of glory, the Lord who is mighty and strong, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one, the King of glory. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna, Hosanna to the King of kings. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This evening, our Mass is being offered for Stephen Misterzo. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who has an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, so merit to share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Parted lips, they wag their hands. He relied on the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God. Indeed, 
many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God. They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God. I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him. All you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Christ, King of endless glory, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Jesus Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, 
What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after the other, Surely it's not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, said, Take and eat, this is my body. And then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my, the blood of my covenant, which shall be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you. This very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, so you could not keep watch with me for one hour. Watch and pray that you will not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. And then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. And while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priest and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with him, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come to do.
Then, stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. And Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my father, and he will not provide me at this moment more than 12 legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day, I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, this man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath for the living God, whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, you have said so, but I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophecy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside the courtyard, and one of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied him while with an oath. I do not know that man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man and immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, Seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money, but said, it is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for farmers. That is why this field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then what was, filled, what was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, 
a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do not hear how many things they are testifying against you. But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So, when they had assembled, Pilate said to him, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. And while he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus, called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look it to yourself. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort, cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak upon him. Weaving the crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon, the man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means a place of skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. And then they sat down and kept watch over him there. As they placed over his head the written charge against him, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads, saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, Save yourself if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and the elders mocked him, said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. So he is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, 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 lama sabachthani. Which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, this one is calling for Elijah. 
Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and, putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were hanging kept watch over Jesus, feared greatly what when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He, sent, he went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that had been hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him to say to the people, he has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to him, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went off and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. I am sure that we have all had the experience of doing something so many times that we don't pay much attention to it. It might be driving the same route to work for 10 years, we sort of go on automatic pilot. And when we have family gatherings, we listen to Aunt Bessie telling the same story over again at family get-togethers. Uh, watching the same holiday movie every year we tend to do other things while it is playing because we know the plot, we know how it's going to end. Well, might there be a similarity between those events and relating the story of the passion of death of Jesus that we have just heard? Do we listen to it and say, oh, I've heard this before, I know how it ends, and our minds start to drift away to what comes next in the day or the evening? We don't tend not to pay attention to all the details because we might figure that this really doesn't affect our daily lives. Uh, do we look at these events as just something that happened a long time ago as a historical description of how Jesus suffered and died? And do we really do that and we miss the real lesson of the passion for our everyday living as disciples of Jesus? So let's look a little bit more deeply 
into what the events in the life of Jesus were during this Passion, the events that we have just heard. And let us see what they really tell us. And the lesson comes to us not so much in what was done to Jesus, but how he reacted to what was done, how he handled this suffering and death. After three years of preaching a message to his followers, he is now being put to death. How did he react to that? We first see Jesus arriving in Jerusalem, not on a white horse, waving to the crowd in triumph, but he came in on a donkey. He came in to show that he has not come to do battle with the powers to be, but to preach a new message. He comes with acceptance of his role and trust in his father. Okay. Uh, he comes amid a demonstration of people that is not organized, but truly spontaneous. They were waving palms to him. But Jesus does not wave back because he knows what lies ahead. He has a solemnity and a resolution about him. What was going on in his mind at this point as all these people were paying him homage? He knows that many of these people will shortly turn on him and abandon him. In the Garden of Gethsemane, the apostles fell asleep, not once, not twice, but three times. A trusted disciple, Peter, betrayed him, the man that he was going to have found his church. Again, not once, not twice, but three times. Another disciple denied him. Many others who were in that same crowd on Sunday gave false witness at the trial. Soldiers mock him. Two men that were crucified with him abused him. He knew all of this as he was traveling that road into Jerusalem. Now, most of us, when faced with this kind of abandonment, with this kind of desertion, would not continue on. We would simply say, I can't do this anymore. But Jesus did. He continued because he knew too that some people would stand with him. Simon would help him carry his cross. The women of Jerusalem would be with him on the way to Calvary. John, a beloved disciple, will stand with his mother. And of course, his mother was always with him. And Joseph of Arimathea, a leading Pharisee, came into the public eye and offered to bury this man. So he knew that all of this was ahead of him. And yet he knew that he was doing his father's will. And with confidence and courage, he moved toward Jerusalem, knowing what lie ahead. He accepted that suffering because he knew that he did not walk alone, that his father was with him. Well, we all, at one point in our lives, have a Jerusalem in our lives. It may not be a city that awaits us with terrible things, but it might be an illness that we didn't expect. It might be a change in our living. It might be a loss of a family member. It might be a missed job. We all have our Jerusalems. The passion of Jesus shows us how to handle those Jerusalems and how to move on, how to accept the challenges and the suffering and the twists and turns that come into our life. And that is this message of Palm Sunday, that we do not go to our Jerusalems alone. Jesus has been there before us and walks with us. So as we begin Holy Week and recall the great events of our redemption, maybe we can focus not just on the events themselves and what happened, but how Jesus lived them and responded to them, how he accepted them. He encountered Pilate, the Sanhedrin, Judas, the thieves behind him on the cross, Peter who denied him, the apostles that fell asleep in the garden. He encountered all of those and took that with grace and acceptance. So it's not time for us to mourn the passion of Christ, but rather to celebrate this passion because it reminds us that we do not walk alone on our own way of the cross. Jesus is beside us and helps us carry our cross 
He is our Simon of Serene. And this passion shows us how to deal with the adversities that we come in our lives, how to accept God's plan for us, and how to deal with those who challenge our way of life. It shows us how to live our faith and bring that faith to others. So, as we go through Holy Week this week, pray that we do not just view the events of Christ's passion and death as something we have heard before and we know the end, but as a way to live and walk in our journey of life. And in so doing, we will always walk in the footsteps of Jesus on our own special way to Jerusalem. Please stand for our profession of faith. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated with the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one commandment for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We call on the name of the Lord as we bring our petitions to him. For Pope Francis, that he may be strengthened by the Holy Spirit and to be restored to health, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord bring about his justice and peace to the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all preparing to enter the church during the Easter Vigil, may the Holy Spirit fill them with the love of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who do not yet know Christ, saving love, may they come to know the promise of the Lord's faithfulness this Easter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the light of faith, especially Lorraine McKenna and J.T. Zorowski, may the Lord welcome them into his eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear and answer our prayers according to your holy will. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our second collection is for our Parish Mortgage Contribution Program. Our hymn for the presentation of the gifts is in the Spirit and Songbook, number 162. Run to the Cross, number 162. forsaken 
No, I am not forsaken. I land a wandering far from the sea. Still, you searched for me. Held dance captive to my failings. Oh, you. to the cross I'd fall in your arms and I know I'm forgiven and I know I'm forgiven I run to the cross I lay down my heart and I am not forsaken no I am not forsaken I surrender all to Him I freely give. All to Jesus I surrender all to Him I freely give. I run to the cross, I fall in Your arms, and I know I'm forgiven. And I know I'm forgiven, I run to the cross, I lay down my heart, and I am not forsaken, no I am not forsaken. Pray my brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O oh Lord, through the passion of your only begotten Son, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased uh, our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. the founts of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Giving thanks, you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen and amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with you, ladies. Yeah, no peace with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion hymn is number 169 in the Spirit and Song book. Behold the cross, number 169. Life's very Lord, God's only Son, Mary's own babe, so cold and so still, helpless before her on Calvary. that won't see, ears that won't hear, lips that deny, the friend once so dear, slowly he turns and captures your eye, and then passes on to Calvary to die. Christ in our midst, all those who bear his wounds in their flesh, suffering for crimes of mercy and peace, signs of the kingdom on Calvary Street. was hung, life's very Lord, God's only Son, Mary's own babe, so cold and so still, helpless before her.
Let us pray. O Lord, nourish with these sacred mysteries, we humbly beseech you that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Our Holy Week Mass uh, celebrations uh, schedule is in the bulletin today and on the parish website. Sacrament of Confession is available on Tuesday evening between 7.30 and 8.30. Confessions will not be heard this coming Saturday on Holy Saturday. Rice bowls will be collected until Sunday, April 16th. Old Palm will be collected until Good Friday. And the Hershey Park ticket order forms are in the bulletin today. Stations of the Cross are this Tuesday at 2, a, 2 p.m. and Good Friday evening at 7 p.m. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. Our recessional hymn is number 416, Jesus Remember Me. Number 416 in the Breaking Bread. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Thank you. Thank you.